Hey y'all, it's Rob here. And I got something very fun to do today. We've both been looking forward to this uh, particular car for quite a while. AJ's wife went out and bought it for him for his birthday. Um, he doesn't know about it yet, which I think is awesome. And uh, she, unfortunately, she's got to work today, so I get the privilege of handing it to him for her. So uh, let's go out there and uh, interrupt one of his videos that he's making right now. And uh, let's get this thing unboxed and let's get playing with it because I'm just excited about it as he is. Just a little bit, it's, it's not really noticeable when you're playing with it. With the MT-10 now, we switched it over to the brushed system and we took it out and it acted like a crawler for, I don't know, five minutes and then that was over. It was all the, what's going on, bro? Hold on, I'm, dude. You're going to love this. I'm shooting a video, man. I realize that. Uh, this doesn't happen all the time. Check this out, buddy. What the hell? Happy birthday. Really? Ah, yeah. oh, dude. You know how long I've wanted one of these? Yeah. You see, Tina, I do. Got, Tina got this for me? Yeah. You're talking I about have the while. best wife ever. <laughs> really? What color is it? What color is it? We gotta open it up. Find out. Oh, no. It's orange, dude. It's, oh, they got the dot. It's orange. Cool. Let's get it on the bench and pull it open. sand and stuff it makes it look outstanding. Got a little damage though. Should be okay on the inside don't you think? Oh yeah it's just a box. All right let's get a look at it. I love this part. Tina got this for me huh? Uh-huh. I'm a little jealous. Yeah. <laughs> the best wife ever, you know, I'm telling you. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, we gotta flip it over. There we go. Hang on that for a second. Oh, we gotta get a look at that. Dude, come and look at this. It completely fills the box. Oh, whoa. <laughs> This is huge. <laughs> yeah, dude, check this out. It completely fills the box. And that's a big box. All right. Smell the new. Oh, yeah. It's like a new car smell, literally. Okay, pull. Oh, yeah. There it is. Wow. So. Looks like the radio bumps right there. I haven't unboxed one of these yet. There we go. There's the parts bundle. Look at that. Tell the suspension to zip down. There we go. I've never taken those off yet either. Well, it's not going to be as satisfying, but there goes the plastic. There goes the plastic. You know, I like bright colors. Normally, I go for green, but I'm really digging that orange. That's bad, man. I like it. And it's nice. Okay, let's set it aside. See ya. Okay, so we've got a, looks like we've got a big zip tie here. Oh yeah. One down. There we go. <laughs> Dude, I'm like jittery. There we go. Like 
body on it. Look at the size of that thing, dude. <laughs> that is bad. Look, at Look how big that is. I'm like six and a half feet tall. <laughs> Look at that. That's cool. We need to do a suspension test. <laughs> Sweet! Look at the size. It's as big as my hand. That's killer. Okay. Let's have a look at this. Check that out. ADS speed control, motor, radio box, servos buried down underneath there. <laughs> you know, I haven't had a chance to really dig around in one of these things yet, so this is going to be definitely a first impression kind of video. Oh, I did notice a problem though. We have a small problem. We use EC5 connectors here and it has the Traxxas connectors. I might have the adapters. We'll have to go and see. Well guys, hey, Rob had to take off. You know, he had work. Uh, Zach stopped by for a short period. He had to go as well. That just kind of leaves you and me. So we're going to dig into this X-Max and one hell of a birthday present, I got to say. But we're going to dig into this a little bit and we're going to see what makes it tick. We're going to go through what comes in the box and let's start with the radio. So this seems to be the average Traxxas radio that comes with most of the cars. It has minimal controls up here. I haven't had a chance to go through it. I do know these kind of radios are quick and uh, I've heard good reviews on them. So that's the radio that comes in the box. Also, we get the packet that comes with it. And in the packet, there's a toolkit. There are some foam blocks. There's a speed gear in there to allow you to gear it up to go faster. And there's a manual and a sticker kit. There's also a plastic block set here. And I'm not really sure what those are for. Um, like I said, I'm new to this car, so I can only go with what I know at the time. Um, there are a couple of foam blocks, and I know these are for spacing out for smaller batteries. So that's what comes in the packet. So between the packet and the radio, that's to be expected. Now the car itself, let's bring you in close and we'll take a good look at it. Okay, so to get inside of this, it's really nice. They put a singular latch on the car here, and you just turn this to the side and lift that unlocks the body and then you lift and pull and it comes off in one piece. It's got good bracing in there and the latch system seems to work pretty well. On the inside of the car here, you'll notice several things that are kind of curious and what it is is this here component slides outward and it rolls back to allow you to put the batteries in. It doesn't require any Velcro. It's just a snap-in deal. There's one for each side. So putting the batteries in this vehicle will be very simple. As long as these latches stay in tight, the batteries should be restrained within the car. Plus with the foam blocks, you can size it to fit your batteries to uh, absorb any unnecessary damage they may incur from trashing and rolling and that kind of thing. Also, you'll notice that I did find the Traxxas adapters for the EC5 connectors. So now I can run my own batteries. I put those on real quick just to make sure that they did work and they do go on properly. So that's a good thing in the short term here. Let's take these off and get them out of the way. So what we have here is a pretty good motor from what I understand. It's a 1275 kV and it's supposed to be plenty powerful to run this car. I've heard that there were problems with the earlier model of the speed control. We'll find out whether this one holds up. Um, everyone seems to be recommending the Max 6 to put in here, and I happen to have one. But I want to run this first and see what comes of it. Um, I've also watched several videos that explain how durable this car is. And it's supposed to be one of the toughest cars out there. No car is impervious to everything. But this has really durable arms on it for the suspension. My understanding is that all of the suspension arms on each corner are the same. So you can buy four packets and install them in all four corners and those work well. Um, however, I hear that there may be a weak point in the hub carrier in the rear. That could be an issue. 
I also did a little research and discovered that RPM, which I am a fan of RPM's materials, RPM also makes the hub carriers and arms for this vehicle. Now, in many of the videos, I've discovered that the arms aren't necessarily in need of replacement. These are durable straight out of the box. And I've seen a lot of people upgrade the wheels and tires and put larger or belted ones on it. Uh, my understanding of that is the best all around tire for these is still the ones that come in the box. So that also adds a little excitement to what I'm experiencing here right now. Um, like any RC car, you're going to want to clean your steering assembly, make sure that it stays freed up, easy to function, um, and uh, it should last you a good long time. <clears throat> I've done some research and the parts for this are not overly expensive, so look, you're always going to break something in your RC car at some point, especially if you push them the way we do. And when you do finally have to buy parts, um, an average price is under $25 for a chassis. You know, you, these shock tower mounts, you know, it's the, basically a third of the car, the chassis, a third of the car. These aren't overly expensive easier either. They are infinitely cheaper than buying the metal components. Also, the majority of this vehicle is plastic. And that, in my opinion, is a very good thing. With the composite plastics they're making today, this is a lot more durable and plastic has a tendency to flex as opposed to bend. So if you slam a metal chassis car down on a tough surface, it can bend the chassis and it'll retain that bend and it'll stay that way. With the plastic cars, nine times out of 10, in my experience, it'll flex and come back. However, with the X-Max, there is a weakness. Right under this little cover, is the center drive line, and this is what connects the front to the back of the car. And that's just a tube, it looked to be aluminum, I haven't taken this apart yet, but it looked to be aluminum. And when you slam this down hard, the chassis will flex a little bit. And when it does, it has the potential to bend that center drive shaft. Not a huge thing, it's kind of a pain to get to from what I understand, but it's an easy repair and it doesn't cost much, so that's nice. The shocks are big, they're durable. Uh, the reports that I've seen on it say that these shocks hold up, they don't fail very often. They're a really strong component to the car. Now this one is still set up with the stock gearing. Um, a lot of the people that I've paid attention to switch that out for the high speed gearing that comes in the packet. However, I like to run things as they come out of the box to get a feel for what they were designed to do originally. So when we do finally gear this up and I get Zach and Robert on site, we're going to take this car out and we're going to run it against the Creighton and probably the Talion and just see how it compares to what we consider to be our larger cars. This car dwarfs those cars. And in a second here, I'll lay out a few cars for you to see the difference in scale. I knew the X-Max was big, but when I took it out of the box, I was shocked at how big it truly is. So let's try and get uh, a few cars up here real quick. I mean, you can see some on the shelves already, but we'll get some up and put them in a side-by-side -side comparison to show you the actual girth and size of this car. Like I say, I'm six and a half feet tall, and look at how big that is. And this is just the chassis and tires. When you get it all put together, there we go. When you get it all put together, there we go. It actually has a lot of size to it. And for me, that's fantastic. Um, there's just nothing about this car that I don't like immediately out of the box. I do have one point that I would like to show you. If you take a look back here, the wheelie bar, although it's made out of good composite material, appears to be just hung on two little arms right here. Now, I don't know how durable those are going to be. I've seen a lot of guys take those off to start with. And I'm kind of torn on that. Should I remove them? Should I keep them on there? I think I'll leave them on to start with, and if they're an issue at all, I'll take them off before I utterly destroy them. So. In the short term here, let's pause 
And let's get some of the other cars up here and show you a difference in scale. So we'll start here with the X-Max, which is a fifth scale vehicle, arguably the largest one in the house. Then we have, this is the Creighton EXB, and it's got the version three body on it. And I did change out the tires and put something a little more rounded for pavement and whatnot. I took off the big tires, that's what's on that. This is a associated MT10, which is the rival, and that's a 10th scale four-wheel drive. And it runs roughly in the same class, being four-wheel drive and basically a monster truck. Now we have a Losi Triple XT. This is a two-wheel drive racing buggy, and it's an impressive little car, but it's still smaller than the others. And then on the end, we have an S-Max, and it's a small four-wheel drive vehicle, and it's a monster truck of sorts, but it's a small one. Now, to get a better view of that, let's come to this side and you can see the difference in scale between the S-Max and the X-Max. The X-Max is substantially larger than any vehicle on the bench right now. Now, size comparisons aside, this is supposedly a very capable vehicle and I will be excited to see exactly how capable it is. Um, I'm told that this is one of the best all-around vehicles you can get. It doesn't do anything better than everything else. There's always a car in a class that can outrun it, outjump it, whatever. But this car is reportedly able to do everything. So it can jump high, it can do stunts, it can run up on two wheels and be sustainable that way and it does wheelies for days so this seems to me like it's just going to be an exciting vehicle plus the, the sheer size of it is going to allow this vehicle to go through areas that the other vehicles simply can't um, when you get into weeds and brush the other vehicles get hung up real easy this has substantially more weight and power in it i would see this vehicle being able to really cut through the brush and uh, just be more fun outdoors so as soon as I get with Zach and Robert, we're going to battery this thing up and take it out and have a run. And then we'll let you know what we think at the end of the video. Okay, so we're out here in our favorite away. park. Yeah, you're blocking, dude. You're blocking. We're out here at the local park, and uh, we got the X Max ready to get it. Here, the fans running. So she's ready to roll. We also have two more Cratons and one Talion ready to get it, and we brought the ramp. So this is what's going on.
hell yeah. I got part of it. One, go. Body's off.
Oh, I got you. Oh, dude, there goes my wheel. Okay guys, so we're back from our runs and uh, we put this through its paces to some extent and we've discovered a couple things that, you know, I understand that the weather's cool outside. It makes plastic a bit more brittle than it normally would be. Um, but we did have a failing in a couple things and initially I was, upset's not the right term. I was disappointed because I figured the X-Max would be tougher. Um, Day one, when we went out, it was snowy out, it was cold out, and I cartwheeled it down the path, and it broke the front bumper here, and it destroyed the mount in the back as well. And uh, those two items, you know, that's not such a big deal. Um, those are kind of light plastic, easily replaced. It didn't take long to get those, they'll go right on and they weren't expensive. So that's okay, I just expected them to be a little tougher. I did do a little online research and found out they do make a pretty tough bumper for it, but it changes the look of the vehicle and it doesn't really do it for me. So we're gonna stick with the stock bumpers on this. Also, we had a problem with the hub carrier and it instantly turned into three different pieces. And uh, the damage is significant for what it is. You know, it, uh, it did, yeah, initially I didn't think I got hit that hard. It looked like Rob came at me from the side and we kind of came together and, but that's not the case. After discussing it with him, he was trying to wheelie next to me. We kind of had a cross platform. He hit me under power and these are big tires. So when he caught it in the front, it just twisted it right out of the hub carrier. And really, if you want something to fail, you want it to fail as far away from the car as you can. Um, I did buy some tougher hub carriers, and of course, these are them. This is just a standard replacement kit. It's got the fronts, the rears, the C carriers. The whole set was there. It Again, <laughs> these weren't very expensive, but still, I ordered some aluminum ones because I would rather have the arm fail than the hub carrier. I mean, it's just a weird thing for me, but that hub carrier should have been a little bit stronger. And I did, did watch a few videos just to try and get my head around what happened. And it's a common thing for the X-Max. So if you're gonna run the stock stuff, which is not bad, order up a new set just to have them with you because at some point you're gonna need them. Also to protect the body, I bought one of these and uh, you have to go looking for these things and what it is is it's a body protector that goes on top of it so it's going to sit right up there like so and that's going to protect the top of the body to some extent now there is some drilling there's some reaming and there's some wrenching to get this attached to the roll cage assembly that's inside the body and it comes with a decent it comes with a decent instruction kit that will show you how to do it. So that's a nice little upgrade that you can put on it. Now, I have three questions. Question one, was it cool? You can't get a better birthday present than that. It is outstanding, absolutely fun to play with. Um, it does go through batteries a little faster than I anticipated, but we did get to run it for quite a while. The first time I only broke the bumpers. Uh, the second time I run out with no issues at all and had a good time doing that. I kind of went out by myself on that one. Uh, third one I went out with Robert and I had a couple of batteries with me. Unfortunately, I got halfway through the first battery and we were done. So it seems to work that way for me a lot. If I plan a bunch of batteries ahead and go out, something breaks and I wind up discharging my batteries the hard way. Because when I go out to do this stuff, I don't take my tool kits, not, I don't take even the portable one, I go out to shoot the video and come back. And you know, I do this so you can see what's happening. So question one, 
Was it cool? Absolutely, this thing's a blast. Question two, how durable is this car? And overall, I'd say it's a pretty tough vehicle. If we, if we were running at 80 degrees outside or so, I'm pretty sure things in here would have been a lot more resilient, uh, a lot more flexible. I also understand that if you take this plastic and you spray it with WD-40, it soaks into the plastic and makes it more limber, a little more pliable. And that might be something I'll consider in the future. And question three. Hmm. I guess I don't have a question three. Question three. Would I buy it again, I guess? Yes. In a heartbeat, I would buy this again. So this is AJ from AJ Jam Studios saying, dude, happy birthday. <laughs>